In this movie, I'll show how to create two important charts for displaying measured data, and these are dot plots and histograms. First, dot plots. Here's a small data set showing how long it took 15 children to get to school. The data were part of a larger sample collected from UK school children in the Census at School project. To form a dot plot, I first need a horizontal line with a suitable scale, and I need a label showing what is being measured, as well as the units, which in this case is minutes. And now simply mark each number according to its position on the scale. There's 2, then 10, 5, 3, and so on. And finally 30. And that's all there is to it. A dot plot is a very simple way of picturing data that shows visually where they lie. It helps you to see broad features such as where the bulk of the values lie. In this case that's clearly between 0 and 10 minutes. So we can deduce that many of these children live very close to their school. And by the way, three of the children in this sample put down zero minutes. What sense can we make of that? Well, I'm guessing here, but a reasonable assumption is that these three children attended a boarding school. I can use this horizontal scale to plot the same data as a histogram. You can think of a histogram as a wall built up with a set of identical bricks. Each brick corresponds to a value from the data set. First, I need to decide how wide to make each brick. There's no single right answer here, but I'll start with a width of 5 minutes. So, here goes. There's the brick for the first number, 2. Since 2 lies between 0 and 5, its brick goes into the 0 to 5 minute interval. Next comes 10. Now, there's a problem with 10. 10 lies on the boundary between two intervals. Should this brick go into the 5 to 10 or the 10 to 15 interval? It can't go into both, but I'm going to have to decide which. In this case, I'll go for the higher one. But I'll have to be consistent if I get another value lying on the boundary. For example, the next value is 5. Should this brick go into the 0 to 5 or the 5 to 10 slot? Well, to be consistent, I'll put it in the higher interval. That's 5 to 10. And so, in go all of the values. And there goes the last one, 30. I'd like to be able to see at a glance how many bricks are in each column, so I'll add a vertical scale and this is usually labelled frequency. Now, I needn't have chosen an interval of 5 units. I could perhaps have used 10. So each brick would look like this. The first value, 2, goes into the 0 to 10 interval and I'll put the 10 into the 10 to 20 interval. The 5 goes into the 0 to 10 interval, and so on. And that's the final histogram. And by the way, a feature of this histogram is that once I had chosen the width of the brick, I stuck with this width throughout, and the same thing was true with the previous histogram where all the bricks were 5 units wide. At a more advanced level, you may come across histograms with columns of different widths, but that does introduce complications. So here's a tip. When you're drawing a histogram, keep things simple and stick to the same interval for each brick.